Yakuza Like a Dragon is taking the series in a very different direction. We have a brand new protagonist in Ichiban Kasuga and a story that is not about a lone wolf looking for justice, but a man who is far more open and who wants to work with others. It is a game many people were excited about and for the most part, in my honest opinion, it does not disappoint. Still, as a new entry in a long running series and as something that is taking that series in a new direction, Yakuza Like a Dragon does have a few annoying issues and that is why whilst not dropping any major spoilers we are going to be taking a very quick look at five things i personally hate about yakuza like a dragon so make sure you keep it locked number one dad dad <laughs> Similar to most Yakuza games, Yakuza Like a Dragon is story focused and tells quite a deep story and to the credit of the game the story is really engaging and in my opinion told really well. Where is he? But with that being said, for the first 6 to 10 hours or at least the first 4 chapters, be prepared to spend more time watching cutscenes than actually playing the game. I've been banished from the Arakawa family and I just... I was so mad, I just did it. I don't even want to exaggerate, but the first four chapters are around an hour and a half to maybe just over two hours long, depending on how you play. And I probably played maybe between 20 to 30 minutes of gameplay in each chapter. And the other time was spent watching the cutscenes. So it does feel for at least the first eight hours or so, I've only really played about 60 minutes of actual gameplay. And that's pretty much walk into another location to watch another cutscene and maybe have a few random fights here or there. Don't get it twisted, I am used to long cutscenes from the older Yakuza games as they didn't shy away from the cutscenes and the story, but it just feels a little bit more open after the first couple of hours or so in some of those older games, whereas in this one, it kind of seems to be taking a slower approach to allow you to run free reign. You have pride when you can't earn for the family! There are points when it does actually remind me of the Persona 5 approach where you don't fully get unleashed into Persona 5 until you finish the first palace, which can take anywhere between 8 to 12 hours, but at least in Persona 5 you are at least controlling your character a lot more, whereas in this game, whilst you do get to walk around and have fights, it still feels like these chapters are more focused on the cutscene. The saving grace though, the story is really good and well told in my opinion, and those first 20 hours or so of the game literally will fly by so you probably don't notice how long it does take but when you do consider some of the time periods spent watching these cutscenes there will be points when you are going to be itching just to get to the action duck in here for a sec uh, um, okay number two Like I was just mentioning, the first 20 hours or so of the game does move by at a very quick pace. The story flows very well and the way you progress through the game is done very, very well. The story does ramp up towards the end of the game, but you do hit a bit of a wall and have to do some serious grinding so that you are able to take on much more powerful enemies that the game throws at you. It is a difficulty spike and this can be quite jarring and I'm sure many people may find it frustrating than fun. Number three. Come on, let's go. Okay, so this does kind of tie in with my complaint about the difficulty spike and the grind towards the end of the game, but I just feel it needed talking about a little bit more deeper. Some of the bosses or even enemies in this game are ridiculously overpowered. I'm talking about bosses that can kill a member of your party in just one attack as you could imagine is very frustrating to deal with. At times, this is when I actually do prefer the previous beat em up approach in previous Yakuza games, because even if I didn't level up to a massive level, as long as I go into a fight with a few health drinks in my bag, I always felt a little bit more confident enough to take on any boss. With it being turn-based combat, it does feel like some fights, not even just against a boss, can be luck of the draw at times, whether you do survive an enemy attack or not. The worst part about it is when you do actually die in this game you do lose quite a bit of money so it can be very very frustrating damn it <laughs> number 4 
Yakuza Like a Dragon has far more in common with a JRPG than it does to the beat em up style of the past Yakuza games. I do kind of welcome this change for the most part because the turn based combat system, in my honest opinion, is fantastic and it is really easy to get into. You do have a lot of varied attacks and it definitely is a lot of fun. Yet again, another reference to Persona 5. That's the reason why I actually did enjoy that game because I do like how the turn-based system worked in that game and it kind of is similar here. However, in typical JRPG fashion, this is a game that loves to put you into fights. Sometimes it can be less than a minute goes by and you get into another fight. And while I do enjoy the combat system, I must admit that I did wish there was a little bit more of a breathing room between each fight. Also, what I do find annoying is that sometimes it is very difficult to evade enemies who are close by. On older Yakuza games, you could simply just run past them, whereas on this game, you literally have to turn around and find another route, only just to see another enemy waiting around the corner for you. If you just want to crack on with the game, this can be very annoying if you don't want to engage into any more random fights than you have to. Number 5 When I got into that fight, I wasn't even thinking about how long you had already been waiting for me. An extra three years I made you wait just because I did something stupid. I'm sorry I failed you. I held you up for so long, but I'm out now. I'm finally back! Now this is a minor grab and maybe a harsh criticism and also weird considering that I do actually enjoy the storyline for this game, but I can't help feeling at times that Ichiban is a little bit too corny to be a Yakuza in my opinion. In the first couple of chapters, the cheese and the corniness is on full display. And whilst I do find it funny at times, it's hard to believe that this hardcore gangster enjoys beating people up. With this approach, it is kind of hard to get fully invested at times with his personality and I don't know whether it's the voice acting, the characters writing, or just my interpretation on a whole, but it's just something about it kind of always throws me off. Uh, how am I supposed to face the boss with a rat's nest on my head? Anyway, peeps, that was a very quick run through of my five gripes for Yakuza Like a Dragon. This to me is up there with the best games that I have played this year. And even though I always thought that the turn-based combat might not work, it is really a good addition to the gameplay, as much as I probably still will prefer the beat em up approach. It is a pity for PlayStation 5 owners that they won't be able to get the port until 2021, especially considering that I personally got hip on Yakuza games through my PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation 4. For PlayStation owners, the game is available on the PS4, but as it is a timed exclusive for the Xbox Series X and S, you won't get to experience the full potential on the PlayStation 5 until next year. But on the Xbox Series X, this game definitely plays like a dream. Anyway, peeps, do let me know your thoughts in the comments below behind my five gripes behind the game, and have you had an opportunity to play this game yet? I've tried not to add any major spoilers, as I do think that this game is well worth playing. And if I'm actually honest with you guys, this probably is up there as one of my favorite Yakuza games that I've played, let alone possibly the best game that I've actually played this year. As always, if you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit a thumbs up. Also do subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so before. And until next video, we definitely say peace out, peeps. It's me. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button for more cool urban gameplay videos.